hungry. Are you? Do you need a snack? I do before, need a snack, dude. Before we roll? I've, I've been on this I need... incredibly weird diet recently where I've been eating nothing. Have you? Yeah, I've been, I've eaten nothing, no carbs or sugar for the last two weeks. That's right. Two okay, weeks, I remember. Dude. So you're, you're still doing it because I remember I, I, I should be doing it too. I'm not doing that diet. I'll have you know. <laughs> I needed to, dude. I was just getting like, Are you, I was getting the 40, you know, the sort of like the belly. Oh, the belly. yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little of that going on. Yeah. Dad bod central <laughs> over here. <laughs> do you, um, do you get hangry? When you uh, I don't when you don't eat, I've only got That's hangry incredible. once in my entire life. Once, tell me. So uh, yes, and, and that is, uh, I guess, sort of like a great example of how I don't get hangry. I can only remember one time when I was hangry, and the reason I was hangry is because I was. By the way, if I sound a little bit bunged up today, it's because I've got really bad like congestion. So it might sound. You do like sound I'm, a little bugged up. I'm, you know, I'm bugged up. <laughs> So I do apologize, everybody. But yeah, I was about 45 minutes away from this house that I'm living in now with the kids yeah. and my wife. Uh, and we were going like on a walk or something like that. And we were like walking up a, a large hill. I was going to say mountain, but it was just like, it was a large, it was like a big walk, <laughs> right? And I forgot yeah. to bring any food with me. And here's the, the fly in the ointment. Um, I was on... A few years ago, I had this infection in my intestines called candida, and mm. which is a whole bonkers thing. I won't go into it, but it's crazy. And to get rid of it, I actually I had to go on a, a no sugar diet. Yeah, for seven months I did it for seven months. Wow, check this out: no sugar for seven months. I mean, like no sugar. It's crazy. Yeah, like just, hard to do. Just, yeah, like no no sort of like salad dressing no sauces be i mean like can of beans no soup no like everything right. like because everything has sugar everything no has bread. sugar in it yeah so and yeah. i was out on this walk and and it was like it was a long way from home and i was and i couldn't get anything to eat for like a good few hours because yeah. we're on this walk and we're like 45 minutes away and I was really hungry. And it really annoyed me because no shops, all like no, no petrol stations, no shops had any food without any sugar in it. I was like, what? That you could eat. Yeah, yes, that I could yes. eat. It was yeah. crazy. Oh, and I should add, it, I was on a, it was gluten-free as well. So it's sugar-free, yeah. gluten-free, seven months. Mm. It was the hardest thing that I ever did, actually. Well, probably not the hardest thing, but it was incredibly hard. I, like I've given up smoking in the past um and i was uh, i loved smoking i loved it i could eat cigarettes yeah. all day it was beautiful <laughs> and if somebody's yes. smoking near me my feet like lift off the floor and i drift <laughs> towards them <laughs> like it's that it's that like smell like smell finger oh just, like, dude dude Whoa. yeah yeah i'm like so into it and so i used to smoke and i gave and i gave up smoking and like and people say like oh yeah giving up smoking's hard i'm like really really it's really hard is it okay try not eating any gluten and any sugar for seven Dude. months and then tell me smoking's hard i mean giving up smoking's hard <laughs> no wait it's like easy <laughs> so well, that's yeah, when i got angry because if you're yeah it, because if you're uh conscious about the food you're putting in your body and you can't have sugar and you're looking at to see what has sugar in it everything has sugar in it everything too. every all the things <laughs> Everything. <laughs> I mean, and I've done something similar, but I think I was still eating yogurt and I was still putting ketchup on stuff. And I was, so I didn't really do it. I just wasn't having like, a, like six donuts. Yeah. I'm missing it, man. <laughs> you know? I'm like seriously missing it. I had to drive past McDonald's this morning. Yeah. I drove past McDonald's at like just like nine o'clock. And I was like, oh, that McDonald's breakfast would be so, so good right now. <laughs> But I didn't. I didn't. I'm doing. I'm doing oh, it for thirty for days. You. I'm doing it for thirty days. I'm just trying to sort of just clean my body out, man. I just need to clean myself out. Dude, that's amazing. <laughs> uh, so I'm coming out there in four days. Are you still going to be on your your no sugar, no gluten situation? Yes. Because I will respect you. I will respect. We're going to break you. it. We're going to break it, and even, like we're going to go for a curry, man. We're going to, you know, it's just, it just okay. has to happen. It has to happen. <laughs> 
we were even talking i was talking to alan about it today connor yeah connor said he was gonna leave he was like if we don't go out for a curry i'm leaving sbl so connor uh gav's gonna <laughs> oh, be don't the, leave like, don't leave connor yeah who else gonna, <laughs> yeah. jim's gonna so we're all gonna yeah shout out to jim and connor Con, jim connor alan and gav uh, we're all gonna go out for a, a curry with Ian when he comes over here to the uh, the uk i need to know what going out for a curry means dude you don't need what <laughs> but you eat curry right i mean i'm, I'm assuming it, it's an, like indian going out for indian or thai food like getting a curry dish oh yeah is that what it means yeah yeah, yeah. you don't <laughs> okay, know what okay, go, okay, yeah it. going out for a curry dude going out oh, like, i love it a londoner might say going out for a ruby murray but yeah it's like what is that cockney, is rhyme, that? cockney rhyming slang like up the apple and stair <laughs> up the apple and pears means up the stairs and going oh, for a yeah. Ruby Murray means having a curry. Yeah, but it means like oh, going Ruby to an, yeah, going to an Indian restaurant and and having far too much uh, curry. Yeah, oh, that's what we're gonna yes. do. It's gonna Let's be great. Dude. Go. It's gonna be great. Let's go. So, Ian, for anybody that doesn't know, and nobody will know because we've never actually talked about it before on the pod. Right. But uh, Ian's coming over for you for two weeks, and you were doing a filming marathon. It's a marathon. Yes. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. We're gonna do a bunch of coursework. For the beginner bassist, which is something that we have desperately needed a long time for Absolutely. a long time at SBL, uh, I'm going to be talking. I'm going to be talking to people about if these things are strings, these things are frets, and then of course past that, just best practices, yeah. technique, right? Playing, getting, getting playing really quickly, right? So instead of learning scales and triads and things right away, we're just going to start playing songs yeah. right away, simple things, and then use those as the backbone to explain some of the things you need to know as a starter. So. Eight, 18 courses, dude. That's 18. Yeah, dude. <laughs> what? <laughs> 18 courses. <laughs> yeah, man. You're going to go back like just, we're going to put you on the plane going back. You're going to be in like fetal position, <laughs> sucking your thumb. <laughs> just, just give me a curry ball, man. Yeah. Just give me a curry. And you'll just be muttering. You'll be muttering. You'll be muttering. No base. No base. <laughs> Oh, dude. No face ever again. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait, man. I can't wait. It's going to be so funny to like see everybody. I mean, uh, dude, what base yeah. are you bringing? What base are you going to bring? You want me to show you? Yeah. Yeah, hold on. Grab the base, dude. It's going to be a base off. I'm really looking forward to it because obviously Jim will be. Because if anybody doesn't know any of the people that I'm talking about, I'm talking about Jim, who like rocks our student experience over in Espel. Oh, that looks nice. The Antigua jazz bass. Right. Can't be anything Gotta but bring the Antigua. That one. I was just saying that Jim's going to be hanging out and just giving a shout out to the team saying like Jim is, he rocks our students' minds <laughs> and uh, headphones you can't get your on, headphones dude. on. But like Alan, <laughs> Alan will be coming out who does like all the videography. Um, Gav also who does like a bunch of videography and editing. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be wicked. But yeah, I love the Antigua Jazz Bass, man. Do you, yeah, I think so. I th yeah. It's funny because I did a call with Ben, who's another, uh, you know, SBL team member. And I said, Ben, what do you think, man? You know, I had a couple of options and he was just like, well, it has to be the Antigua. <laughs> it has to be the Antigua. It was just like, th there's, there's no other option. And yeah, so, sort of like, I can't even believe you're asking. He's like, nah, man, it has to be the Antigua. <laughs> was, were you on a call right. with him? Were you on a call? Yeah, we did, we, yeah, we did a coffee, you know. Was he living in that, yeah. was he sitting in that massive chair? I always laugh when I'm on a, a, a call with Ben, because he's <laughs> yeah. like, he has this huge armchair that he sits in. Dude, <laughs> yes, he has a huge armchair, and the, you know, and then the angle down, so it's like facing up at the, at yeah, the throne. Yeah, he's like right? a throne. And, yeah, he should have like a crown then, on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, King Ben. And then behind him, he had that giant, incredible rig um, that Warwick uh, helped Borg the Jonas rig. Hellborg thing, yeah. Yes, yeah. man. Oh, I was like, dude. And then we essentially just talked about amps the whole time. It was it was lovely. Apparently, so. those amps are like heavier than the sun. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Apparently, I've heard that too. Super heavy, yeah. Super heavy. So I'm not cool. sure. Are they valve? Is that why they're super heavy? I'm not sure. I don't think so. No, I think it's based on a Neve 1073, uh, uh, which is you know a great old console preamp. And then I I believe that the power amp he might be like wrong. <laughs> you know, if, yeah. uh, if you're listening, Ben, I'm so sorry. But then I think the power amp is also solid state, so I don't think there's any valve in it. It's just really really excellent solid state um, transformers and uh, components, and it's supposed to be awesome. Amazing. I remember when they came out. Oh. I'm envious. He's actually got. Yeah. I, I, has he been showing you his uh, Federa that's on order? 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It looks good, <laughs> oh, doesn't yeah. it? We talked oh, all yeah. about it. Yeah. When is it? Is it? He won't have you by next week, will he? Um, he he thinks he might. In fact, he told me that it was just going in for final setup, uh, and that it was almost done. So I think he actually might have it by the time I'm out there, which would be fun. <sighs> he could come out. He could bring the Federa. Jim will bring his Federa. Oh, <laughs> it's gonna be a party. I played that today with. Ta- he's got tape welds on it. It was really oh, really interesting. It's like that's cool. Thirty four inch scale, like Matt Garrison shape, two pickups. Yep. Like got, he's gone for like a P bass vibe. It sounds great. It's got tape wires and obviously moves. It's a five string, which kind of moves us on to our topic today. Yes. Is, oh, well done. Uh, did nice you like seg. that? I'm a pro, I dude. Like I'm a seg, pro, dude. dude. <laughs> yeah. Like it moves us on to toe. Like, should you even be thinking about playing a five string? But before we move, get on to that, I want to talk about your like experience of the, like, what did, when you were playing a four string, when you first started playing and you saw. Yes. Oh, when you realized, oh, there's five string basses. Oh, like, yeah. what did you think about it? What was that emotion right. like for you? Oh, dude, because I came up, we we came up, because we're the same age, in the era of, like, the bass just exploding. We had all of the bass heroes. Bass Player Magazine exploded. The bass heroes, oh, like so Flea, good. Getty Lee, and Marcus Miller, and Victor Wooten. And, I mean, I think all of those people I named are mostly four-string players. But, of course, then, there were five-string players as well. Gary Victor Willis. A little bit. Yeah, yes, of course. Pat Gary Tucci. Willis. Yeah, and oh, uh, O'Teal Burbridge was playing a six-string, six. right? Yeah. Six-string um, modulus, right? Yes, that's right. And I remember, so I started out on a four, like most people do, and then I started to see all these all these players and hear all this music and these extended, you know, range basses. And I think, for me anyway, I perceived that bass players always, you know, had this maybe a bit of a chip on the shoulder around, well, hold on, don't relegate us to the back. There's there's a wave of, uh, you know, also uh, Les Claypool. There, there's yeah. a wave of these crazy bass players playing five string, six string, Bill Dickens, seven string. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, you know, and, and so we can play lower and we can play higher than you and like get out of our way. You know, bass players are coming through just <laughs> like, so I remember thinking yeah I, i'm gonna i'm gonna feel that way too and i just did the thing where i was like i'm not gonna play a five i'm gonna get a six okay. so i went right from four <laughs> yeah. to six and i played a six for a while i had a modulus as well uh like O'Teal. but i was really into dream theater so i love john Myung, and so i was working out all that stuff on a six string bass on my six string modulus i actually had a carvin lb 76 yeah, yeah, yeah. first yeah Mail order, love that catalog. You know, I ordered one of those oh, yeah. uh, and showed up, and I I can't, you know, I remember like coming home from junior high. I think I was in the ninth grade, and I saw the box on my door. You know, it said carbon. I like ran. Oh I mean, wow, wow, <laughs> dude, incredible, yeah, dude. Amazing. So yeah, I I did the thing going straight from four to six, thinking that it was somehow superior. That the the six string bass was the best bass. Far better than a four, far better than even a five. Do you think Come that, on, do more you think strings is better? Do you think it's because people were maybe playing more complex material on those instruments and therefore in your mind you're like, oh, because they're playing more complex things, that means it's better. It's whatever. It's harder to play. Whatever. Yes. Is that where it came from? Yeah. I just decided that working on your chops and being able to play, you know, crazy expansive techniques and all the was was the ultimate was the mountaintop, and so anything that was punk or, you know, like even even just like old time rock and roll stuff and even R and B to some extent, I was like, no, it needs to be fast and furious, and, right? I mean, that's just like the teenage version of me just wanted everything to be chops and. Right and like all over the instrument, you know, ah, just get after it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and then and then you of course have many experiences then in, in the later years, or I did that were like, oh, just like like chop, n- knocking out those pegs from under your feet of like, hold on, <laughs> that's not what it is. Yeah, but, yeah. But I don't know. I mean, I'd love to hear from you too. I will say for me that time of going from four to six, and then I bought some five strings, and you know, we can talk about all that too, but. That time period from jumping from four to six was 
was amazing. So I was writing melodies and I was playing bass solos and I was competing. I did like a bass solo competition. Oh, wow. I wrote a bass amazing. solo that I called Mood Swings, dude. <laughs> <laughs> And I played it in front of my whole high school in the auditorium. And then I went to these jazz, you know, like camps and like did competitions. Huh. But that was a really fruitful time for me in terms of creativity and my like just tunnel visioned more is more phase. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, you know, then it was just this painful realization that like, oh, more isn't always more. <laughs> It's interesting, you know? isn't it? That, that cycle yeah. that you go through. Let me, guys, let me just let George in because he's sitting at the door. I can hear oh, him George. cry. Poor little George. Give me oh. like three seconds. Maybe, George, maybe five seconds. If, if you don't know, Scott has this sweet dog, Greyhound, named George. George is a sweet boy. I hope I get to. I hope I get to hang with George a minute when I'm oh, in the UK. Little George, man, I want to awesome. hang with George, man. <laughs> oh, dude, we've been talking about getting a dog recently. Another one, a puppy. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. George has got to show the new dog the ropes, bro. Exactly. Got to get that new dog so George can show him the ropes. Well, we, we're kind of thinking it's it'll either go that way or the new dog will terrorize George, <laughs> and and the last year or so of his life will be utter torture. So it's um, it's a ba oh. it's a balance, dude. It's a balance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But my uh, yeah. my experience with multi-stringed instruments, and just if anybody's a mad, like if anybody's wondering, we are actually going to get into the nitty gritty of this, and we're going to be talking about should beginners think about playing a five strings and a five and six string bass. We're going to be th we're going to be talking about are you actually a better player if you can play a five string bass? Yeah. We're going to be talking about is it actually harder to play a five or six string bass? Are they more expensive? Do all pros? need a five string bass and mm. there's a couple of different ways of actually stringing a five or tuning a five or six string bass so we're going to be talking about all of that but we'll get to that in a second first of all let me yeah, I want to hog hear. the limelight <laughs> please <laughs> and, hog uh, it up uh, uh, hog the limelight and tell you about my experience with five or six string, five and six string basses so like i guess that mine has been not the normal because I actually what my second bass, in fact, probably the the first bass I owned was actually a six string bass, which sounds bonkers, right? I was somebody let me borrow a four string bass, so I borrowed a four string bass. It was a status, and you know I just sat there for hours slapping it, you know, for like three or four weeks. Yeah, just, you did. <laughs> you know, status. Doing, yeah, status. <laughs> it was. I can't remember what it was. The budget one. It was like just completely plain ash body four string it was it was cool even though i couldn't play it for toffee anyway so <laughs> did some slapping on that and then there was a bass for sale at the um at the workshop that i was uh where i was you know i was working and it was like 600 pounds but it was a six string and it was kind of like a Ken Smith looking thing, like shape, old school Ken Smith looking shape, but it wasn't a Ken Smith. It was actually an overwater bass. It had yeah. six strings. And I just thought, and I guess for context, my favorite player at the time was Schoolis Ferrison, who was yes. an Icelandic bass player, beast of a beast of a bass player. Absolutely. And he was playing with Alan Hallsworth and he played a six string. So I thought Schoolie plays a six yep. string. I play a six string. So anyway, so I got this Absolutely. Uh, got this six string and I used that six string for for yeah, for like maybe 2 years or something like that. But interestingly what happened in that period is I started working in a theater, um used the six string for that, the the middle four strings. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> you know, just the middle four. <laughs> right? Because actually mainly because none of the parts are actually written for a five string bass on that show that I was doing. So I just used the middle four. Um, and then after that show that I'd done for maybe like six to 12 months, after that I ended up on a cruise ship. And on the cruise ship, at some point, I met a, a guy on there who was, he was actually a passenger, but we've talked about it on the pod before. And this guy changed my life, man. He was a passenger. Piano player, right? Piano player, yeah. And, yeah. And, and every day we'd get to the dock, you know, or, or whatever dock it was. We'd stop in like Nice or Monte Carlo or Saint-Tropez or like one of these ports. We'd stop at the port every single day, be a new port. And his wife and her friends and his friends would get off and he would sit and just practice the piano on the grand in, in, mm. in the ballroom every day. He just wanted to play and practice every day because that's what holiday was. That's what he wanted from his holiday. And... And I just got talking to him one day and 
through that kind of discovered, oh, I really need to, well, he, he just told me some stuff that really blew my mind in terms of how I should be thinking about chords and, hey, there's this whole world available within sort of like harmony and chords and this is why you should be really thinking about this and, hey, what chord tones do you know? And I was like, what? what are chord tones and he was like what are you talking hey, about what are yeah. you really talking about and he was like explained it hey here's you know here's what chord tones are don't worry about scales so much just here's the chord tones let's make sure that you can do that he was teaching me a bit of jazz and and and, and it's i can't remember honestly at any point whether he was like hey what you know maybe simplify it down for yourself so you don't have to worry about the B or the E or the C string. I think he didn't, but like through just hanging out with him, at some point I just questioned to myself, I'm really struggling understanding where the chord tones are that I'm trying to, you know, yeah. learn. And I thought, I'm gonna just make it a little easy for myself and take off the B and the C string so I've got less information to deal with. Took them it. off. And then and and that was kind of like a moment where I was like, okay, it felt a little easier. It yes. did feel a little, easy. and, and yes. you know, and this comes into play with the question: Should people start on a five string? Should people start on a six string? I actually don't think there's a right answer for that. I think it, yeah. it is a big old. It depends. Yeah. For me, um, for me personally, actually, when I moved, when I took the B and the C string off that six string and just played it as a four string every night, it it was less information to deal with and therefore right. I really felt like I was learning faster and it wasn't so much of a struggle for me. And I think it actually paid off big time for me. Whether I, you know, because I do get asked, you know, hey, I'm just starting out, should I play a five string? That's the most, I guess the most. Yes, um, I get asked that a lot too. Yeah, that's the most common. Like some people yep. six string, yeah, but it's more, should I play a five, five string? Right. Honestly, I don't have an answer for it. I think it does depend for me, it was really, really important to learn the information that was under my fingers and and having less strings made it an easier task f for me personally. Absolutely. I'm not saying that would for everybody. Maybe, you know, because I think that there is absolutely an argument for, hey, if you want to play a five-string bass, you play a five-string bass. If you want to play for a sure. six-string bass, you play a six-string bass. But I'm just saying for me personally, to really get the... Be able to being able to move around the fingerboards and, and visually see all of the arpeggios and all of the stuff that I wanted to be able to see, so I, yeah. I wasn't ever lost on the fingerboard and always had the information under under my fingers. It was easier for me to do that on a four string. And at that point in my you know life cycle as a musician, it was really important to get that stuff down. So yeah, for me it was easier to start on a four string. With the caveat of I don't recommend it for everybody. You know, I think that. It gets increment. It does. You've got you know a five string incrementally moving. It's got more information. A six string is a little bit more information. So it just right. It, yeah, it, like yeah. It leads me to believe that if you're really working on learning all of the information under your hands, um, I'm trying to think of an, an analogy, and I'm sure that I should really do that. I should really pin this down, so it makes it a little less abstract. But if you give yourself less information to to have to learn, it's going to be a little easier. Yeah, for sure. I, I sort of wondered, I mean, this is probably a terrible analogy, but I sort of wondered if it's like cooking and you have all of the spices, they're all there. You can put all of the spices in your dish or in your dessert. You're like, well, I wonder what I should, where do I even start? Well, a four string is like wiping out 25% of those spices, right? And yeah, starting with yeah. some essentials. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, People, it depends maybe on genre. Because I think sometimes when I see people that start on five and get really in love with and locked into a five, happens a lot in like hard rock music or like metal music where there's like low notes that yeah. are really an essential part of the sound of that genre. And then also gospel music. Like if you're playing in church in more of like that American gospel tradition, all that stuff is maybe flats. And so you're playing a lot of like E flats, D flats. Yeah. which really sound so lovely on a five yeah. in that genre instead of trying to get them artificially maybe with an octave pedal or just tuning your four string down. Yeah. Um, I could see like if you came up in either of those two worlds that a five would maybe even make sense to start with. Yeah. Um, but 
what happened for me and probably sounds like for you too is that we had this inflated vision of like oh well a five or a six is maybe better and you know and i was playing all of this riff based music i was playing along to john myung with dream theater you know so yeah, yeah. i'm i'm not even thinking about chord tones i'm just thinking about how i can go <laughs> like you know in yeah, a position yeah. Yeah, without yeah. tons of shifting and starting on a low c you know and so for me the six string was amazing and then i don't know if you ever had this experience but what really made me go oh is i got into the studio with my six string playing on a project and i couldn't mute it so the the oh, biggest the i didn't biggest, have that experience i wasn't man I, I never got so i went to four string before yeah. i did any sort of like studio work i'd just been doing live work professionally but i, yes. I you know i hadn't been in a situation where the engineer was like okay let's just play that back <laughs> yeah, let's solo like like there's nothing worse than the engineer being like okay let's solo the bass <laughs> hell yeah. Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah 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 it's, yeah. it's like standing in front of the band with just no clothes on just like well <laughs> here, here's what i got <laughs> it's like exactly. a vulnerable experience right yeah. so i mean i remember yeah playing my six on a thing for my band or something but it was in a nice studio with you know it was the microscope of the studio and the studio really is it's just a microscope you can hear so clearly and perfectly how much you suck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? And so I remember like, oh, what's that? There's something in the low end that's just weird and like oh there's something muddy what you know is it like a tom maybe is, are the toms not gated or the you know and everyone's going yeah what is that and we sort of like solo through all the channels and then we soloed the bass and i'm playing a figure kind of up high with my thumb on the pickup and the b string is just subtly <laughs> flopping away <laughs> like in the wind yes. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 yeah. And I mean, and I could never really hear that when I'm practicing at home, right? I didn't pick up on it I, at rehearsal, really loud, you know, drummer playing really loud. I could never really perceive it. And I went, oh, oh okay, well, we'll have to go back and do that again. And then it began this journey for me of that actually is the most important thing about playing a five or six is making sure that if you're playing something on the A, D, G, C, C string, string yeah. on those, yeah, those high, maybe four to three, you know, three to four strings up top, that you have a real command of how you're choosing to mute the open B and E. And I know, you know, if you're listening to this, those of you that have had this uh, experience are nodding, going, yes. And those <laughs> of you that haven't, but you play a five or six, it will happen. Where you'll oh, yeah, go, sure. man, what is that? Or you'll play an interval and it'll go, and there'll be this horrible rub. Yeah. And you'll be I'll tell quiet. you what it's like, dude. Yeah. I'll tell you what it's like. It's like when you sat, you sat in the studio, right? And you're like, who didn't put deodorant on this morning? And you're like, so <laughs> you're trying to locate it, right? You're like, is it, is it Dave? He stinks today. <laughs> and then the unfortunate truth slaps oh, you around the, the face truth. when you re you realize that you stink <laughs> and you didn't deodorize. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly what it's like, man. You're like, oh, I stink. Yes, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then it's just like, oh, then you gotta find the brand of deodorant, and you gotta change your ways. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta apologize to everybody. You're like, you honestly, dude, I've just realized I stink. I've done that a few times for sure. Oh. Yeah. It's amazing. It it's so true. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. And let you notice it less live, um, certainly, but also through a big PA, you notice it. But if you're just jamming with your friends, it's hard to notice. You get into a studio, you get on a big stage, and you realize, oh, what I realized is the B string actually became a liability. Yeah. It wasn't a thing that was adding to my playing. It was something that I had to think about constantly. Am I muting it? Am I... Am I managing the muting on this instrument? That's, to me, that's the most difficult thing about going, especially to a six. I mean, holy moly. But a five also, it's tricky. It's tricky to keep all those strings from just flopping. And, and especially now that like five strings are better and the scale lengths are longer and the electronics are more clear. Like that B string is just like, Whoa. It's relentless, isn't it? Yeah, it's relentless. <laughs> it's like, you asked for a bigger B string sound? Well, careful what you wish for yeah like, yeah yeah oh. <laughs> exactly and i think that you're exactly right it's sort of 
it 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 it's somewhat kind of like that that danger expands with the six string because you've got just more to deal with. So I think as yeah. as sort of like a if you've only played four string in the past and you move into a five, it is definitely going to give you that added kind of thing that you need to deal with, which is muting that B string, which is ultimately going to do. It, that's ultimately going to ha- have to happen with your your plucking hand, right? And yes. and if you are just starting out, maybe just ask yourself, hey, is this something that I want to be dealing with now, or you know, or later? And and, and again, I don't think there's an exact correct answer for whether you, you need to start on a on a four, five, or six. I think what we're doing totally. is just sort of like pushing the pushing the realities on the table. And then as you move to six. Well, interestingly, when I played six, just to mention it, it, it when I it was, it wasn't all it wasn't all to do with the visualization of the fretboard. Mm. I'll tell you what it was it was to do with as well. It was that on a six string, I found I found myself kind of like doing a lot of solo stuff and, and like you know and focusing on that. And in trying my heart, to use it. And in my heart of hearts, I knew that's not where I should be focusing. I should right. be focusing somewhere else. So by removing the C and the B string, it kind of just like penned me in a little bit and, and yes. made, made me focus on what I should be focusing on that time. And how many students have you been, you've talked to in your past where they'll come in and they're like, and they're doing all of that. And you're like, okay, let's, let's jam around a blues. And they're, yeah. and they're like, oh, I can't do that. You're like, okay. <laughs> so I was in that kind of situation. Of course, yes. Yeah, but also just taking it back to that technique thing as well, like moving from a five to a six string. With a six string, I think that, do you know players that do that over the over the neck thing with the thumb yeah. on the yep. on on the on the fretting hand where they've they're holding the neck kind of like a baseball bat with the thumb hanging over the top. That yes. can definitely work on a four string to a certain extent playing certain styles of music. Yep. It can kind of work on a five string. On a six string, get out of town. It's just not gonna I work. Know. Like you have to have your net your thumb on the back of the neck. So yeah. there are some adjustments that you'll have to make if you have been playing in that over the you know with the thumb hanging over the neck like some players do so yeah and i'm not sure that that's a negative because it's obviously a positive to get that that um, fretting hand thumb on the back of the neck but it's definitely something to be aware of that it ain't gonna ride if you're playing the six <laughs> string you need to get that thumb on the back of yeah. the neck. yeah 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 that's so true and and i'd love to say too is you know so we're talking about people starting right um if you're starting out you know, consider, consider, do you, what's the reason? What's the reason? Do you want a five just because you think that they're superior? Well, they are not. They're just for a different purpose or they're for being able to extend down that low, but there comes a price, right? But what about, and I think this is on your list too, Scott, like what if you're a pro? You have that on there? Yeah, dude, I've got like, do all pros need need a a, a B string? Or or like need a five string or a six string? Like do pros need it? Well, the one, the thing that I wanted to say is if you are staunchly in camp four string, for whatever reason, you've never thought you needed a six, you think they're corny, whatever the reason, because there's sort of these like, ugh, people roll their eyes, you know, Jocko only needed four. It's gotta four. be a four I mean, string, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and I, but I understand that. I understand that. Here's the thing I want to say though. If you've never experienced a five or a six, go get one. Like if you're a pro or an intermediate player and you're kind of curious, but you're you're not totally sure, you feel like you have your foundations put together on a four string bass, get a five, get a six, because it yeah. is this fun adventure. You get to experience these new, I mean, just playing that third fret on a B string, playing a D in the context of a yeah, band, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then even ex- checking out like, I mean, you know, what made me want to get a six again, Scott, is seeing the course you did or the interview maybe with O'Teal. Oh, yeah, dude, dude. I mean, he was playing things and I thought, oh, man, I need a six again just so that I can explore some of those upper voicings. Now, does that mean that I'm only going to play six and I'm going to, you know, take it to every gig? Of course not. It's just going to be a different tool. So I would really encourage, especially if you're an anti-five, anti-six player, Go get one. Yeah, <laughs> turn for sure. that around. For sure, turn it around. And, and like Rich, Rich Brown is the one that does it to me. Like oh, every Rich time I Brown, hear Rich dude. Brown, I'm just like, oh, I really want to play six string. If you're an Same. SPL member, obviously check out Rich Brown's courses. They're in the uh, course library. He's got two in there. He plays that six string. Who makes that? Oh, Ken Lawrence. Lawrence. Yeah, Kenneth yeah. Lawrence. Oh, 
He, dude, dude, the guy's an alien, man. He's like a so freak, good. freak show in all of the greatest ways. Yeah, he's absolutely, I love the guy. And, and, and YouTube just, channel too. His YouTube channel, oh, the yeah. Brownstone, yeah, Brownstone, is so killing. Shout out to Rich. Go check out that YouTube channel, 100%. the Brownstone. He does these just like lovely long form lessons where he sits and he's kind of, he's like, hey. He's, he's got it going got on. Like soothing, man. He's so you know, good. Low voice. And it's just, oh, I've Rich got a, Brown, we I, love you, man. I've got a proper man crush on Rich. Like, yeah, if, if I was a lady, if I was a lady, I'd be stalking him. <laughs> but um, he's, yeah. gr- he's great, man. And also, as well, just to answer that question for like, yeah, like should should a um, should all pros have a five string? My answer would be if you are a stereotypical pro, so not yeah. Pino Palladino, right? Not you know all of you know not famous professional music. I mean, like just jobbing bass players, right? Yeah. The answer is kind of yes. You kind of need I one. I totally agree. So, uh, so let's like I'll name a couple of sort of like who I think is sort of like the at the top end of that. Like Sean Hurley, yes, yes. he's got a five string. Uh, John John Button, of course, he's got a five string. Right? All of these yep. have got the five string. And I will tell you my personal story of not doing this. So, uh, <laughs> and why you should have one. So, yeah, I had a four string bass. I only had one bass. It was a four string. And I got booked to do, to, to do a theatre show last minute, um, and it was a week long show, and and I had to just go in and sight read it. Um, I can't even remember for whatever reason. I didn't even get to see the chart beforehand. It was a real oh. kind of sort of like last minute. Thing. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was one of those, right? So I didn't get to see the charts beforehand. So grabbed my trusty axe, jumped in the car. Uh, went to the show. I might have flew out to the show. I can't remember. Anyway, got to the show, sat down and in the afternoon and I got to look at the parts for the first time and within 10 seconds, I was like, oh shit. Oh, wrong base. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. I was like, these parts are all written for a five string bass. Yes. There was like low E flats, low yeah. Ds, low D flats, low yeah. Cs all over it. And, yeah. you know, and, and I had to sight read it and that was a nightmare. It was a yeah. nightmare. It was really, really hard. Imagine sort of like, just like doing this like low, low sort of like octave, D to D octave pattern, but I'm having to play it an octave higher. It just higher. sounded weird. Oh, and it was also sort of like torturing my brain because I'm having to sort of like, Sort of like transpose, transpose yes. an octave. Like you don't want to be in that situation. So you don't want to be no. in that situation. You also right. don't want to be in a situation where you're working with an engineer and that they expect you to play something on a fire string and you're like, eh, I haven't got it. So if you look at, right. you know, there's a lot of great uh, YouTube videos of pros turning, well, like pros working in the studio. For instance, you can look at Sean Hurley working in the studio, John Button working in the studio. If you look on the bass rack behind them of the basses that they've brought in, in general, there's like a P bass with flats, there's a P bass with rounds, there's a jazz bass, there's sometimes like an obscure kind of semi-hollow bass, and there'll be a, a five-string bass. <laughs> and right. that is because yep. they've probably had their butts spanked on this as well. Right? They've yeah. turned up in the past and thought, oh no, I didn't bring that five-string. So yeah. I think for all jobbing bass players, it's definitely something that you should consider having. The thing that I've experienced too in the studio is... Um, there is certain music that like an OC2 sound or like an octave pedal sound, which, you know, I absolutely love. Yeah. People ask me a lot, like, well, you know, can you just get it with the OC2 or do you need to have a five string? What if you have an octave pedal? I never think about those things in the same way. To me, an OC2 or an octave pedal sound is when I'm going for like a synth bass sound. It's not actually note driven, like, oh, I need to get lower. Yeah. Um, it's actually sound driven. And there are certain things where, like, oh, I, you know, I have made the mistake too of bringing a four and thinking, ah, if I need to go lower, I'll just kick on the octave pedal. Well, it's not the same vibe. Yeah. Sometimes there's a riff that's boom, ba doo, doo. Like it needs to go down to a D, but it needs to sound like it actually on the like instrument. That note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. versus sort of a synthetic recreation Moog sound. So I have started to bring a five always with me to sessions as well, especially if I know. Oh, we might be doing something that leans sort of maybe modern country, or we might be doing something that leans kind of like even like adult contemporary R and B. Like if it's rootsy rock, I'm not too concerned, um, yeah. or like in kind of a folk zone. But I've done a few things recently that have been like 
mm, this would actually sound really awesome on a five. Got it. And so yeah, 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 I typically bring one. Let's talk about your Michael in just a second. Uh -huh. Oh sure. Oh, sure. Let's just, yeah, and like another one. So I'll tell you what we've just been through. So we talked about should beginners even think about a five or six string bass, and we kind of said, well, it depends, and it, it depends on your goals. It depends what. You know, and I think that we've put like a bunch of caveats that all are valid within this. Uh, we've talked about, are you better if you play a five string bass or, or mm. a six string bass? No, obviously that's pretty obvious. Is it harder to play a five and six, six string bass? We've talked about that. It is, it is, yeah. but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. Five yeah. string, it's going to be a muting thing. Well, I think that with a five and six string, it's both like you're dealing with more information on the fretting side, or, you know, yes. to visualize. And from a mutant standpoint, it's a little harder. Just still doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it, right? So five string is a little bit harder on the mutant side, six string definitely harder. And then you've just got more information to deal with. And we've yeah. obviously talked about, do all pros need a five string? <clears throat> yes, they do. Yes, they um, do. What we haven't talked about is, are they more expensive? Mm. Uh, I'd say slightly. Just, to, just in case we've got any complete beginners who haven't sort of like nerded out on the internet sure. yet. And they're thinking... Well, you're talking about five and strict bases. Are they more expensive? I think they are a little more expensive. Would you say Maybe that? Slightly. Slightly. I mean, not crazy, though. I think there's probably a lot of those. There are five and six strings in a price point that is more like affordable. It's not like, oh, to get a six, you have to spend 10K and get a Fodera. Yeah. I think yeah. there are a few, although I haven't been in the market for a six string in so long. I don't know, you know, what like the cheapest six string out there. But I typically, I I feel like they're not like, oh, wow, you add a string, it's going to add $1,000. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, like actually, I'm looking right now. It's it's not, I'm looking on the, uh, on the, uh, the big G, the big Google, and it's, yeah. you can get like a decent five. You can get a Squire five string in the UK for like three hundred and fifty pounds, which is like yeah, just over four hundred dollars. So it's yeah. yeah, they're affordable. So maybe totally. a little different for six strings, but you know, I think that five strings definitely doable for most in terms of the four and the five string thing. And something too is if anybody out there wants to try one but doesn't have the scratch to, you know, spend the hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars on getting an instrument, you can just take off the strings that you have on your bass and string your bass, B-E-A-D. Or yeah, yeah. you can go the other side and you can go A-D-G-C. That's yeah. a tenor four string. I mean, I remember Victor Wooten making beautiful chord melody music on a tenor four string bass. Yeah. But I've done that before. Like I knew that I needed I did it once for a gig where the vibe, like showing up with an active five string just aesthetically isn't, wasn't the vibe, but I needed those low notes, but I knew if I showed up with my active quilted maple top five string, which is what I had at the time, it wouldn't yeah. be the vibe. So yeah. I ended up just taking a four and putting sort of a light gauge set, you know, 120, 180, 60. Yeah, yeah B-E-A-D on a four. And then, hey, you've got, you know, you have the the five string the, like, low side. Really yeah. deep tone on that P bass, <laughs> Mr. Allison. <laughs> uh, why, thank you. Oh. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and, 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 and I guess it's sort of like worth mentioning as well that you can act with a five string bass. Traditionally, they are strung B E A D G. So, like a yeah. four string bass with a lower, lower string. But then in the, I guess, sort of like early, like late 90s and then oh, moving yeah. into sort of like two th early 2000s, it was all about the E to C. So it's like yes. a four string with a high C. Shout yes. out to like Matt Garrison, Yannick Guizdala, Tony Gray, like all of those dudes. It was like the- Scott the, Devine in me? the beginning. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, man. yeah. It was, that was the whole rage, wasn't it? So, and, and, and man, that was, and I really enjoyed those players and do still yeah. enjoy those players that right. they have decided to go for a five string bass, but they don't want the low B for whatever reason. And I think that Tony actually now, Tony Gray actually now plays a six string, uh, but at the time there was like this craze of E to C players. I think that the, the guy that really drove that was Matt Garrison. He was mm -hmm. the, he was the godfather man. And then everybody <laughs> else was like, Matt's the god we're just yeah. gonna sort of like follow you know because he was so great and 
Absolutely right. Shout out to Matt Garrison. You absolute oh, yeah. mofo. Like, what a and dude. My, my <gasps> favorite E to C bass player was actually a student of Matt Garrison's, which is Andres Rotmistrovsky. Andres yes. Rot. Yeah. On, on Instagram, if anybody wants to check him out. Buenos Aires, Argentinian bass player who's just unreal. And he plays a lot of four string, but his main, or the thing that I associate with him is he plays this beautiful Lorita bass that is strung E to C and just his oh, chord so vocabulary. Nice, isn't it? Oh, he does this thing right now called the Bajo Bar in um, Buenos Aires, where he gets together once a week with a, a cast of singers, and it's just duo music. It's just bass and a singer. Packs these bars out. I've seen it on Instagram, and they just play tunes. And there's this huge list of tunes, and some stuff he knows, and some stuff he sort of like learns on the spot. Yeah. And they just, and then the whole bar sings. So it's sort of like a take on the classic piano bar, which I don't know. That, but with bass. I, mean, I don't know where that. Yeah, but it's, it's the Bajo Bar, and I yeah. was like, dude, it's such a great idea. And shout out to Andres, man. He is. He's one of the cats for sure. He is, man. He's great. Uh, we've got an interview on SBL. We've got an interview yes. on the podcast with Andreas, and we've also got a full video of that as well on the website. Um, and he had uh, his friend come in. She did vocals, and oh, Magda. it was like Magna. It was <gasps> who's done a bunch of stuff with Michael League and Snarky Puppy. It was incredible. It was really incredible. And, and they incredible. just they just did it on the spot. That was just I sort of like, told yeah. me that. Dude, dude, dude they you just told me that and I died. did it on the spot. Yeah. She was a fantastic piano player as well. Like, wow. Just beasts, man. Anyway, let's talk like let's before we wrap it up, let's talk about your Michael Lull and where you are right now with five string. Sure. Like where's yeah. your where's your heart with it? Have you been pulled towards <laughs> the five string, Mr. Allison? Because you you, you 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 showed up on Instagram a couple of weeks ago rocking this five string bass by Mr. Michael. Lull. Well, Michael's son. What's it what's yeah. his son called? Oh man, Spencer. Spencer, Spencer Lull. Lull. What a dude. I, mean, I love this and, guy. Oh. oh, he's so awesome. Dude, shout out to Spencer. Yeah. Man, like I have been aware of Mike Lull instruments for a very, very long time because I think they started may maybe in the 90s, but a Seattle based company making a super fender. So essentially, you know, doing that thing that a few companies do where they take the classic designs and then, you know, quote unquote, make improvements on them. Yeah. And I saw them in, in that regard. And I thought, oh, that's cool. But I was never really pulled toward it. And you know what pulled me toward that company was Spencer Lull's content. 100%. He would do these amazing, like, yeah, these Instagram stories where you get to choose colors. And then he's playing. He's a great player as well. So yeah. he's demoing the basses. He's a great guitar player. He's demoing the guitars. He's talking about them. And when he came on board, I mean, it, it, tragically, his father passed, um, I believe, of cancer a number of years ago. And Spencer came on like, whoa, like into this company yeah. to fill his dad's very large shoes in this company and in this industry. And he's just done such a great job. So I fell in love with Spencer. Yes. And then I started to look at all, you know, he's doing all these great colors. And, and then I thought, I don't really know if, I don't really know that I would play one and I'm not sure, but the more I started to look and then we started to talk and I was like, I'm just going to get one. I, I really like this dude. Like I want to support him. I want to get one and, and check it out. All right. I'm going to grab it. Grab it, dude. Uh, this is, this is a shoreline gold five oh, wow. that, and, and the thing that I learned is that it's, it's not just like, oh yeah, it's just a fender and, um, and then they slapped some, you know, th their their name on the headstock. The way they do their neck, the finish on the neck, this is an ebony board, which you can't it, get yeah, on a yeah, jazz yeah, bass, yeah, yeah. right? 35-inch scale. The way they crown the fret ends is so lovely. It feels so good to play. They do an interesting thing where you have an option to string through just the B string. Just the B string, yeah. Um, they developed their yeah, they developed their own pickups with Seymour Duncan that sound so amazing. They're based on like 60 sec, uh, 60 spec Fender jazz bass pickups. Yeah. And man, it's just like the fit and finish, how they do it, how they do the truss rod, how they do the frets, like the body contours are slightly different. Even the heel, like check out this heel. I love it the actually, heel. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The heel is so cool because it's actually thicker here than it is here but it doesn't look weird like sometimes you know where they carve out certain companies carve out this side it's just slightly tweaked so there's yeah. a bunch of things like that 
we're like, oh man, how they fit the neck into the neck pocket. I've just gone like all in and, and it's an amazing sounding bass. And for me, somebody that's more, um, familiar and comfortable with a fender style instrument like the you know that antigua jazz bass yeah this was a five string that i felt like i could really get behind and feel like oh well if i'm playing a jazz and then i need to switch to a five uh for a certain thing it won't feel like quite as much of a shock yeah. there are yeah. other yeah. instruments that i have and have had over the years that have felt like wow switching over to them feels <laughs> insane like such a departure yeah so this to me is like the five string for the reluctant five string player you know what i mean <laughs> uh, yeah yeah yeah, absolutely like, well, i love it i love this instrument just to double up on that like i've been playing my um my f bass for maybe two months now maybe a little actually maybe longer yeah. maybe like three months four months or something like that yeah because you've got a couple of fives dude i'm in love with it I'm really, really yes. in love with. I'm in love with mm. it. I'm in love with it, and it's actually kind of sort of like torturous a little bit for me, because I just, I kind of see myself as sort of like a P bass dude. And I mean, like, oh, like you know, like right. you know, if I died tomorrow, they'd be like, yeah, that's Scott, dude. You know, the guy that used to play the P basses. Oh yeah, the Scott guy. <laughs> and, um, yeah, yes. and 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 this the, like this. It's like a new woman's like entered my life and it's 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 causing you know it's causing problems for me. I'm like, oh no, am I am I cheating? <laughs> Disruptions. I'm, yeah, yes. am I cheating on my my, my yeah. P base wife? So I'm not sure. Yeah. Like I really love it. And I actually took I was doing a gig a couple of weeks back with a friend of mine, and, um, and I took my P base and I took my F base to the gig and and I did the first track on the, and I actually took it. I was, I, I took it, and I thought, well, maybe I'll, I'll play the F bass on a track or something, just in, because I've not played it live. So I, uh, I took it along and yeah. picked up my P bass and did a tune on the P bass. Felt great. Felt at home. Got on the five string F bass. I was like, oh no, <laughs> oh no. Did it feel like home? It felt like home, and I couldn't go back. I couldn't uh -oh. go back. It was like I was like, oh no. <laughs> This is so weird. What do I do? It was right. really, yeah. Like, emotionally. Your heart has been. Yeah. Your heart has left, you know. Yeah, I imagine sort of like I was married to my P-Base and I've just like met yeah. this new, <laughs> this new sort of like, you know, like this new individual who happens to have five strings and, <laughs> and I don't want to like her. I don't want to like her, but she's so beautiful. <laughs> She's so beautiful. Oh, she's, man. She's yeah. sort of like, you know, serenading me. Yeah, like I really am. Like I'm having a, <laughs> a weird sort of like, I don't know. Like when you think about me, do you think, am I ever going to be, will my personality change if I start playing a five string? Mm. Will people will people look at me differently? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, I've had those wonderings too. I know what you're getting at. Like, is it off brand? Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, will people be confused? Yeah. I mean, I will say for me, looking at you, I still associate with you with the P bass because I remember that transition. Yeah. And then I feel like the five string, maybe, maybe it's just a phase. But <laughs> also, <laughs> you know, you know, like maybe, maybe it's just a phase. Maybe it's a passing thing. Yeah. But if it's not. I don't think that anybody is going to be, well, there might be a few people, but I don't think it will be this thing of like, oh, I can't believe Scott's playing a five now. I think you have, oh, yeah, yeah. you, you have paved the way and you can play <laughs> any bass you want and people are still going to associate you with this amazing platform you've built and not with like, oh, hang on, wait, he's playing a different instrument. I don't think, bass, yeah. yeah, dude, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. you've, uh, I think you've gone past that. Actually. I've earned the right. I don't think yeah. it matters. Maybe you're right man yeah. i'll tell you what i have been thinking recently i've been like going through this sort of like transition of sort of like leaving home i.e the p base and moving to somebody else's house i.e a five string yeah. um yes. i've been thinking well i really love this five string bass what would my perfect five string bass be <laughs> yeah like going down that rabbit hole because this was kind of a oh, fluke sounds... i even thought about contacting marcel at F base and said, Hey, can you just strip this body? So it's just one color, just like natural. Can you strip the body? Can we thin down the neck a little bit? And can I put a pit guard on it? Like, I think that would be 
Or for me, that would be the awesome, the, like the perfect base. Yeah. One, like nothing fancy, just like a bog standard matte finish on it. Um, you thin down the neck a little bit, front to back, and, and and then put a pit guard on it. And I think I'll be in. Don't you dare do that to that one. Sell it to me before you do that. <laughs> and let me give you, I think, a better idea, Scott divine signature f base dude that's where it's going there's a 12 month waiting list though, though. like i was talking to someone the other day they were like it's a 12 <laughs> you want it now month. yeah i want it now dude i'm like yeah, you want it, I now. Just want it now i don't, can't <laughs> wait i was talking to jim today and he was playing his federa and i thought yeah. and i literally i was like what's the build time like on these and he was like oh dude 18 months i was like done it <laughs> yeah <laughs> i want it now. i want it <laughs> it's now. crazy everybody <laughs> I <laughs> I wonder. I wonder if Marcel had bumpy in the queue. I won't tell anybody. Maybe, <laughs> you just can't maybe. tell. Like like three weeks later, you show up and people have listened to this Honey. podcast. Like hey <laughs> hey. Oh, maybe I should give Marcel. Dude, a shout. I think that would be incredible. I, I do like. Should. I, I, I think really should. really love the bass. Love it. Yeah, I know you've been playing them a lot, and you have a great relationship with them. And I say, do it. And then I think we need to pop up there and do a factory tour and hang. Oh, Come on. dude, it'd Let's be go. so good, dude. It'd be so good. It'd be so good. Yes. So before we call it, obviously, we've been all about the five-string and six-string basses today. I just want to say with a huge, big old caveat over what, all of the stuff that we've said today is like, if your heart's pulling you towards a five-string, pulling you towards a six-string, just freaking do it. You're not going to go to bass yeah, jail. Do it. Like in in like I no. want I want everybody to be listening to the, like listen to this podcast to play bass for years. So it's just going to yeah. be. I think that you know we've talked about it before, and I've pointed out that when you, we're making these decisions, all decisions that we make, some are kind of like final. You make that decision, and there is no going back. This is not one of the right. decisions. You can do it. No. You can kind of sort of like dip your toe in the water and then you can eject yourself or you can go deep, right? It's just, you know, I think that everybody should be just open to more of a, the, the journey of learning the bass rather than sort of like these, I guess, these sort of like decisions that are going to make or break you. I think it's going to be, it's all going to be fine. Definitely. And and hey, I want to I wanna cliffhanger it a bit. Check this out. Go for it. I want to cliffhanger it a bit because what if someone at some point asks about a fanned fret multi-scale oh. five string or six string bass like this one that I'm holding in my hands right now, a Canadian Dingwall D-Rock Custom 5. Yeah. Hmm. I we wonder should, if we uh, could talk about multi-scale at some point. Oh man, we should definitely do that. We should definitely do that. <laughs> hey, can I just can I be super selfish and just give, just give a shout out to a drummer that I uh, I found on Instagram yesterday. Oh, I've, please! I've never heard of this guy, and he's got like ten thousand followers, and just and and the the headline is that more people need to know about him. So this guy, yes. I'm just going to my saved posts on Instagram. I'm this gonna look guy him up right now. Teaches on Berkeley. Teaches at Berkeley. And where am I? Here we go. Yeah, he teaches at Berkeley and he's called James Murphy Drummer on um, on, on Instagram. This guy. Oh. James Murphy Drummer. Ooh. <laughs> Chops. <laughs> If someone's listening to this at 1.5 speed, this will be crazy. <laughs> Whoa! But he's got this kind of, check it out. Yeah, he's got the Dilla. Yeah. The Dilla thing. Oh. Yeah, dude. Feels great. He, he's like, sort of like got a mix of um, Richard Spaven, um chris dave and yes. and there's somebody else coming to mind oh what's his name oh, i can't remember the dude's name uh, eric harland oh sure 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 yeah yep. eric harland um richard spaven and uh and uh yeah and chris dave so good so anyway shout out to oh, mr, mr. That, murphy dude. in boston i just want to share the love with you know other other people out in the universe that are doing great things in music anyway dude should we call it i love it yeah Let's do it. Okay, guys, we will see you next week. See you in a bit. Bye. Take care, everybody. Bye.